All right, everyone. So we are here with Rhythm Panza. So Panza, if you're not aware, is a deck around getting out of Mana Dork early on, and then we're able to get things like Blood Moon out to kind of stop the opponent's game plan, and then we can play our relevant threats to get things out and get things going. Um, early on iterations of this deck played things like um, land destruction spells and the sorts of like that, so in order to really slow down their opponent, but those versions ended up having the problem that you didn't have the ability to kind of close out the game, so we really are just relying on Blood Moon here um, and we're trying it out with Rhythm of the Wild um, based off Alex's recommendation. He's the one that built this deck and sent it our way, so thank you, Alex. Um, so, this card link makes it so our creature spells can't be countered and our non token creatures have Riot, uh, which is the new mechanic that gives a plus one plus one counter or haste, which will be pretty sweet with a lot of our um, top end here, like Inferno Titan, um, Blood Braid becoming a 4 3. Um, just a lot of good quality creatures that we're going to be able to make even better with Rhythm of the Wild. Um, the sideboard here, pretty good. We got, you know, Surgical for Graveyard decks, Ancient Grudges for those artifacts, some board sweepers. We got some Hate for Blue with Boil and Two Chokes. Some more Graveyard Hate with Scavenging Ooze. We have Shatterstorm to just wipe the artifacts out of this world. Um, more Artifact Enchantment Hate with Gutter Roll, uh, Dragon Claw, Relic for Graveyard Hate, and then, um, Got a response for those control decks and then Dragon's Claw for the burn decks. So, without much further ado, let's run it. Oh, okay. Um,. I missed it. I, I thought I grabbed the most relevant, uh, the most recent list um, that had it, so. Unless that was just something you were toying around with. I thought I grabbed the most recent list and then apparently clicked on the wrong one. So this is a little bit more outdated uh, from what you recommended. Um, yeah, that's very true. The incidental damage is pretty solid. So this hand has a turn one Utopia into a turn two um, Spellbreaker, um, which is get, puts us on a pretty aggressive game plan, but... I think this is good enough to keep, honestly. It's a little land heavy. We would like another threat here, but I think we're okay with it. Looks like we're going against Hard and Affinity. Things the more relevant play here. So we can drop um, drop the Gruel Spellbreaker and swing in, but our opponent's going to be able to start ticking up with that hardened scales and onto the hanger back and just getting out of control really fast. So I think we have to shoot down the hanger back and then just pass it back to our opponent and then next turn hopefully um, be in a better position because. If we even just give them one turn with hanger back being able to tap, it's going to be out of reach of our uh, bolt here. Um, hmm. So yeah, I think I think that's the line we're going to have to go. And I think we're just going to pass it. Up. 
We've got another hanger back. Paula is massing quite the board state already. Blood Moon would shut off their Pendle Haven and their Dark Steel Citadel, but not much else. And we can generate some mana and look for two creatures. Hmm. I think we're. Are we better off just dropping uh, the Girl Spellbreaker here so we can block and then? play the land pass turn and then next turn drop Domery and see if we can dig for something more relevant because then we would have the following turn enough mana hmm let's grab a forest Breaker, and I want the 1 1 counter. We'll play the land to play tapped, and we'll pass it back to our opponent. Arc bound is not good for us. It's a very good chance we're just dead here. Because they're going to be able to swing. I almost feel like they should have just uh, kept Hanger back back and that way they could have put another counter on it which would have let them get even more damage in because they would have been able to add Affinity's a dreadful matchup that's good to know well, at least we have Shatterstorm <laughs> So there's no way our opponent doesn't kill us here. Alrighty. Alright, Alex, what is the recommended pathway here for our cyborg plan because I feel like we want to bring in destructive revelry shatter we want to bring in the anger of the gods and then we want to bring in the ancient grudges am I missing anything Yeah, Moon doesn't seem great here. Um, it does turn off their um, man lands, but I think with enough the amount of artifact hate we have, um, I'm okay with cutting them. And then Ooze doesn't seem fantastic here either. Um, so I would, I'm thinking that would be the other cut. Um, what would be your recommendation on the last one? Unless you don't think uh, those six cards should be cut. Cut the green and the red, and then run blue white. You know that seems like a solid, uh, seems like a solid way to go to a different deck. <laughs> uh, maybe bow here, and then that way we can keep a ronus or Huntmaster. i kind of like the idea of, uh, of Huntmaster being there as a persistent way to shoot things down so i'm going to probably cut the ronus then all right so let's run it like that all right
right, so we got turn one Arbor Elf into nothing turn two, and we need to draw a red source to get the Bloodbraid Elf. This hand's got potential, but we need to draw a red source with this hand. And we're not going to be able to slow them down turn two if we don't draw the red source either, so that puts us in quite the predicament. I think this hand's got enough upside though for us to keep. Definitely need the red source right now. Okay. That was quite the Andrew hand, the way they just dropped everything and then dropped some more. It's high quality. Okay, so they have a welding jar, so they're going to be able to prevent us from taking out their stuff um, completely. So we can bolt the Steel Overseer here, and they would have to waste the welding jar. And then next turn, we can Destructive Revelry. Um, oops. Uh, spend, uh, do the Destructive Revelry on the Steel Overseer and get rid of it that way. Um, alternatively here, I think... Okay, I'm... Um, Okay, I'm not misreading that. We can just Domery, tick up, go to six, and then bolt. And then that way we potentially have access to even more mana. How does that sound? I think I'm not misreading Domery, right? That you can cast this on anything. It's just if it's a creature spell, it gains Riot. Seems pretty good, right? I think that's what we're gonna do. Okay, cool. Well, it looks like they F sexed. Oh, you're talking about me keeping an unkeepable hand base after I, you know, don't be unreasonable. I think that was a very good hand. <laughs> that was totally. Bolt does have right. It's good. Okay, so. Once again, we're in a position where we really want to get rid of that steel overseer. Um, four, five, six. We can go Blood Braid into Destructive Revelry. And we can give um, our, you know. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add some mana. And we're going to go, I guess we could Revelry into anger the gods wipe the board that doesn't seem bad either that seems seems better yeah
tonight, and we're gonna play this out, pay the life. Happy with that. We got a ballista for one, which is now three. I necessarily care about bow right now because it can shoot down the ink moth, but that's it. I guess I'd rather see we can blood braid into another um, another artifact hate spell. And we do it. We're so good at this game. Counter and beat up our opponent a bit. Heartbound Ravager. Alrighty, we don't want, we want to be able to Ancient Grudge. To take out the uh, take out the ink moth because that's definitely going to be lethal to us. If we play the bow, this doesn't seem as worthwhile. We could write up on mana. Um. Value Domri? Okay, we'll value Domri. That seems like a good call. And we get two creatures, so let's get Blood Parade and Inferno. And we will go land into Blood Parade, and then that way we can hold up Ancient Grudge Mana. a bird. Domri's alt gives us, at the beginning of each end step, create a 4-4 red and green beast with trample. Okay, now the downside is I don't think we can swing because I can just stat, uh, sack their Mox Opal or their Dark Steel to make Arcbound at 6-6. Six, six. So I think we're just going to be passing here. Animation module. Alrighty here. So we can, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can Utopia Sprawl down, so that, that's gonna be relevant, just wash there on mana. We can Domri up to generate, so we can do this, generate an extra mana here. Uh, not extra mana, wash your mana, but we're casting another spell. Uh, cast this, cast this. And do I care about being able to keep the blocker? but have it be liable to get hit. I think I do have the mana. And then I don't think it'll matter unless they play exactly like a ballista or something. 
but I'm gonna be able to shoot down a good chunk of their board. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go this, we're gonna drop the Titan. And then we're gonna give it haste. We're gonna do the three damage to them. And then we can swing three, do three more damage to them. They have to block Infernal Titan um, if we want to let them block. We could also activate Ancient Grudge. Hmm. If we activate Ancient Grudge, blow it up. They have to sack their stuff, throw it on Ink Moth, and they could still block our Infernal Titan, so we don't want to go there. Should we bone now? I don't think so. I think the Infernal Titan was more relevant being able to swing here. Because we can... Um, let's see. So we can swing. And they would have to add counters to it. And they'd have to do it again. Hmm. Sack, sack, counters. Yeah, I think we swing with just Inferno Titan. And we can send the damage here at the Arcbound, forcing them to sack. Block. And I think as long as we can make it back to our turn, uh, we'll be able to drop the bow, and then that will let us win the game because we'll be able to. Okay. Uh, because we'll be giving it death touch. Yeah, I won't forget the grudge. Uh, I just don't. I think we have to wait for the ink moth because we don't really care about the arcbound, and they can still activate um, right now. So that's dangerous if we let them. If we shoot the arcbound, they just activate uh, ink moth, throw the counters on there, and then they swing at us for lethal. Okay, so he's adding a counter onto it. Is he going to pay the mana for module? Okay, he did. Am I missing something? We can just shoot the arc bomb, kill the arc bomb right now, right? And then he can't generate the mana to put it on Ink Moth. I don't think I'm missing anything, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. We can just grudge now, kill the Arcbound. He can throw the counters on the token, which is fine for us. And then he can't have the counters on his Ink Moth. And then if he draws another Arcbound, he can't cast it and activate it to move it around the way he would want to win. All right, let's do it. And we're definitely okay with just jumping here, no matter how big that creature is. All 
All right, so we just pretty much just, uh, we're gonna drop the bow. Give our attacking creatures death touch. And that should be game. Hey Patrick man, thanks for joining. Definitely remember ya, no worries there. Glad to see you're doing all right. Thanks for joining me on my uh, second stream. Yeah, as far as I can tell, he's dead. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's exactly what we wanted. So we're going to run it back. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Death, Touch, and Inferno. Ping them for one. Game. Okay, so this hand can go Forest, Utopia Sprawl, into Bow of Nylia, into Shatterstorm. As long as they don't have a pretty nuts hand, I think this is just fine. Seems like a slower hand, which is everything we've ever wanted in life. Hmm. I think we're just grabbing a stomping ground, tapped, and then we're going to play out this Arbor Elf. Bring in Surgical. He has magic cards in his hand we can take. That seems like a terrible option. This is a pretty slow hand for our opponent. And it's also a handle we can drop an Infernal Titan right now on. Which I think is everything I've wanted out of this game. And then we can follow it up next turn with a Shatterstorm to guarantee the game win. I mean, this is modern. Turn three Titans, normal, right? This, this is how it's supposed to work. Yeah, it's definitely fair. So next turn we could drop Bow, and then our Inferno Titan will have Death Touch, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That was great. 1-0. Yeah, Magic's, uh, ma I mean, this is modern, so this is um, an eternal format. Um, uh, it goes back quite a bit, and it lets you do some pretty crazy stuff. If you're ever interested in getting back into it, um, definitely just let me know. You know, I'm still in the uh, same area, and I can definitely touch base. I own a lot of cards, and we can 
you know, play some games and whatnot. Um, this area has got an amazing, um, just an amazing, like, magic community. There's, like, three high-quality stories you can go to, and then there's a couple other ones that still has a player base, but, you know, there's three stories in particular that has a really strong player base, so you can get, like, 20 to 30 person FNMs, which is really sweet. So as far as this deck goes, so to get you caught up, all we're trying to do is play some mana dorks such as Birds of Paradise, Arbor Elf, or um, Utopia Sprawl, and then we're going to power up some strong cards, and we have some other cards that slow our opponents down. So that's pretty much just our game plan um, every game, no matter what. We just want to do that, and if we're doing it well, we're, we should beat our opponent. If we don't and they make us stumble, we'll probably lose. Looks like we're going against Burn. Happy we have that scavenging ooze right now, then. They're gonna play birds and pass it back to them. Yeah, you know, I had such a strong love for Yu Gi Oh! when it first came out, but now if you play it, I feel like you're just playing like a degenerate version of. I don't know, of like legacy, not legacy, yeah, vintage, where like everything you do just kind of kills you. And like your opponent's just like killing you turn zero. It's awful to me. Um, so, Blood Moon does have some relevance against um, Boros Burn, because they really don't have access to, once you cast it, they don't have access to white mana anymore. Um, I feel like I'd rather bolt the Eidolon first. And then play a tap land, and then pass it back to my opponent. Next turn, I'd be able to go ooze, and then try to eat um, two things, um, which would then prevent it from being able to get killed and gain some us uh, some life. So, I think that's the line we're gonna go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, just don't want to sit down and, um, I don't know, not that magic's much better. There's a lot of decks that just, like, you know, modern, it's a lot of times a, oh, do you have it on turn three? Do you have it on turn four? I lose. But at least there's some interaction up to that point. Like, dying on turn zero seems awful. I don't know how that's legal. And, like, when they did the first bannings for Yu-Gi-Oh!, and then the second wave of the bannings, the idea was trying to stop these degenerate combos and um, auto requirements on decks, so I don't know what changed for them. I don't have the option to sub or donate. Okay, well then, um, I am uh, just starting into this, so if anyone has any insight on what's causing that, definitely let me know, I'd really appreciate it. I am going to try to see what's causing it. Okay, so I could play Tracker here, drop a land, get a counter on it, or I can go Ooze, eat his Eidolon, and then they would have to send out a spell towards Ooze, effectively getting me four li uh, another three life. Oh, I have to be a Twitch partner to do that? How do I become a Twitch partner? I guess is the next question. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of uh, making them spend the mana towards the ooze, uh, um, towards the ooze and picking the spell that way. What's our bird? Why are they bolting the bird? Oh, we're gonna eat your idol on.
Consistent streaming and viewership. 75 followers, 50 hours streamed, or three viewers a month. That's absolutely fine. I can definitely do that. So we're going to crack this, get another forest here, and we're going to eat our bird. Okay. Well, that seems cool. Can definitely make that happen. As long as I keep it up, right? <laughs> Alrighty here. So, we can go... Tracker. Into land. And we're going to pass it to our opponent. So right now I am not against playing Blood Moon because it will shut off any other helixes um, that he has in his deck. And then we don't have to pay life to crack the land. Boros says, okay. Um, Pons is not really strictly a landy deck anymore from my understanding, but, and we're trying out some cards like the new Domery and the new Rhythm, so um, we're not necessarily just doing land destruction. The only thing we're really leaning on for stopping our opponent is Blood Moon. So if I've got to get to that many followers, if you guys haven't followed yet, I'd appreciate it. If you guys do, that'd be really awesome. Huh. They shot the tracker instead of shooting us. Our opponents made some pretty interesting plays. Hmm. So I think Blood Braid puts us in the position to win next turn. Counter. Get that Rhythm Riot action going. I'm gonna play Bird. And... Add the counter. And we're going to swing us for four. As long as the opponent doesn't have double burn spell, I think we get it. Storm breath. And we're going to get that counter. Nice. We got that one. So I imagine here we want Dragon's Claw and Ooze. Is there any other thing relevant that you would recommend here, Alex?
Okay. And I'm thinking of just cutting two blood wounds for it. Cool. Well, then let's cut that and we'll add in these. Pulse. I do love a good pulse, the Muramasa. I think uh, Andrew has turned me on to that being a great card. <laughs> Alrighty, so this hand's slower. Um, hmm. we would have a turn two gruel breaker into a turn three blood breaker as long as we can get the land infernos are kind of just dead in our hand until we get more but it doesn't seem bad we might be able to race our opponent getting gruel breaker into blood braid let's see if our opponent will just give us the land Nope, looks like we got a rhythm coming. Alrighty, opponent, give us the land. I think I want to play the Rhythm here. I'd rather play the Girl Spellbreaker to kind of prevent them from attacking us. So let's do that. Take some damage. And we're going to add the counter because I'm not planning on swinging. We're just going to pass it right back to them. Um, the Rhythm of Wild. So this enchantment is um, three mana. It gives creatures um, you control can't be countered, and then non-token creatures you have Riot. And Riot is when you cast that creature and enters the battlefield, you can give it a plus one, plus one counter, or you can give it haste. Let's see if our opponent wants to swing at us. Nope, that's good. Didn't want them to swing. Alrighty, so I think we're willing to take the point of damage. And then cast Blood Braid off. I'm gonna cast the tracker, okay. I think we're just gonna swing with the Blood Braid. Blood Braid and Ghoul's Provoker. Hmm. Can we race our opponent like that? I think if they get a Searing Blaze, we're just dead if we do that, this attack, with both of them. So I think I'd rather hold one back, uh, hold a Spellbreaker back, because no matter what, then I'll be able to Block off the bigger things. blocking here. I just don't really want to take any damage so if I can prevent as much as I can it'd be awesome until I drop this Inferno Titan. Double 
double skull crack means that our tireless tracker is dead. Domri. Opponent's got one spell in hand. So as long as the opponent doesn't have double burn spell here, we're okay. Oh. And we're just gonna dig deeper. See if we can get one of those life gaining creatures we have. That's not bad either though. So if we swing with the Riot Breaker, he could potentially kill our... So if he's got a burn, two burn spells, we're dead no matter what. Can Is there a burn spell that's relevant, though, that they would kill Tracker but couldn't kill Gruul? I think we have to swing with Gruul, though. Because if we go three... Here, they don't block. They go to 10, and then next turn we build a glory bringer and kill them. Four. Okay, so no, we can just swing with the tireless here. Because the damage should be fine either way, because glory bringer is going to come in as a 6-6. Uh, I mean a 5-5. Five, five. And 5-5, five, five, yeah, we're good. we're good with that trade. They concede. Okay. That's kind of odd. I feel like we were dead to a lot of things there. Like, a lot. So. Huh. Well. Still won. <laughs> Pony probably had a land in hand. I don't think anyone's ghosting us. I am not good enough to get ghosted. We are up to 13 followers. Yeah, yeah. Climbing the numbers we are. But yeah, I don't think I'm playing any events uh, in paper this week because the weather is just so awful. I'm going to try to avoid going outside as much as possible. And uh, next week, though, as long as things aren't too busy with school or work, I'll probably try to make it out on a Monday or Thursday to one of the events. Uh, we will gladly go first. And this hand... I don't do anything with this hand. Would you keep a hand like this, Alex? I feel like this hand... I'm just going to be casting spells and then dropping a bow or a rhythm. And I don't even drop a glory bringer until turn 5. Like, actual turn 5. Okay. Alright. This hand's very reasonable. I don't think I want the Storm Breath, though, because I think I just want to hit more mana sources. Because we can go turn one burn into turn two Blood Moon. Against... Against Blue White? Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. Yeah, that seems like a good policy. Discard any hands that don't have any acceleration. Alrighty, I think we just want to drop this tracker. See if we can present a relevant threat here next to our Blood Moon.
And let's drop both elves. Down with blue, white, indeed, Greg. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, we don't have double red for Inferno or Storm Breath, so I think we're just on the beatdown plan. And I don't even want to play the other Arbor Elf, because the big thing we were missing here is just another red source, so I don't think there's any value to playing that. You can root against me because this is your deck, but I just want you to know we're going to win. See? I knew we were going to win. So we're going to bring in Choke, Choke, Boil. Is there anything else we should bring in, Alex? Is Scavenging Ooze good enough to be brought in? And what are your recommendations on what... Oh, yeah. Guttural response. Obviously. Now, what do you normally take out in the blue-white matchup? Because, like, Glorybringer is not looking too hot to me. Because it's not that relevant, I don't feel like. Um, cut down on the landy. Now, we don't have any landy to cut though. <laughs> we have blood moon, blood moon, which I think is pretty good, isn't it? Isn't it? In this matchup, shutting down all their uh, main lands and dual lands. Uh, I, I disagree with you. I think storm breath sounds great. Um, I was leaning towards the bolts, honestly, um, and then maybe Titan. Okay. Now, because the game goes a little bit longer in these control matchups, would you rather cut some of the early on, so and like maybe cut a mana dork or something? Um, and I don't think Nylia is that great, so I feel like I mean the bow of Nylia is pretty irrelevant here. Yeah, I think I think that's a good plan here. I'm gonna cut the storm, uh, the glory bringer, two bolts, on a bow, and a birds, and then I'm gonna bring in the choke, the boil, scavenging, and guttural. Yeah, we only cut one creature though. I mean, two creatures, and we're bringing in another ooze, and then the other stuff we're bringing in is I think super relevant. That's why I didn't want to cut any more. Hmm. Well, let's try running it like this, and we can uh, um, swap it again during the during the next game if we need to, because we're down to just a couple seconds here. Seems reasonable. Got some accelerators. Got some good threats. Ooh, we got rhythm of the wild as well. This is great. And we got a backup rhythm. Oh my gosh. And it resolved. Boom. We could go Utopia Sprawl on the forest, cast the Arbor Elf, give it haste, untap it to generate more mana. Our creatures can have double riot, right? I, uh, yeah, this is this seems good. So let's sack this. Let's glow this in flexibility. Let's grab this down the ground. I don't think our life's that relevant here. We're gonna go. Utopia Sprawl on the forest, and I have plenty of red, so I think we're going to want more green here. Generate the green mana, 
Drop the Arbor Elf. And we're going to give it haste. Untap the forest with the counter on it. I mean, uh, he's hoping on it. And then we're going to drop another rhythm. Untap this. Tap it to generate three mana. And if they've got an interaction, I guess I would rather have them take care of the who's here. And we're going to give it haste and then give it a counter. Eat their opt. And then swing in for good times. I did not double haste. I definitely gave it a counter. Detention sphere, okay. What are they gonna hit? Are they gonna hit our rhythm? They're, are they gonna hit our rhythm? Oh my gosh, this is the worst thing in the world. It's okay, we got blood braid off. Into another Arbor Elf. And I think we're just gonna swing here. Yeah, I don't really want to drop the tracker yet because I think we already have plenty on the board. Um, so I'm holding him back. Just passing in here and keeping. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna hold everything we draw here just because I don't think we need to cast anything else. Because we have lethal on board already. Uh, we are gonna eat his guards though. Boom. Blue white, not a problem. Take that, Gorbachev. good you know technically we're equivalent to pod right now you know greg we could try out that uh that uh, green blue ponza brew you uh crafted up a while back Does anybody know if tomorrow's still going to be another adult snow day? That card does seem sweet for it, and we'd be generating so much mana that we just get a relevant threat, gain life, and draw cards. Seems sweet. I think I gotta retweak my um, closing state stuff until Thursday. That makes sense. Is crime still canceled? I saw the GRPD posted that. <laughs> okay, so this hand's got uh, got some potential, so I think we're gonna keep it. We go Arbor Elf into Utopia Sprawl into Blood Moon with more Arbor Elves. As long as they don't kill our dude, we're good to go. Ooh, I like that name, Hydroid Ponzo. 
Yeah, we, um, I left early on Tuesday and then just worked at home. And then today I just worked from home for quite some time. So, all right. So we drop Utopia Sprawl. Oh, we don't have another land. That's unfortunate. Um, so Utopia Sprawl and then just cast another Arbor Elf and then next turn drop Blood Moon. the red and then play armor off hopefully our opponent doesn't go too crazy it looks like they're on dredge it looks like we're going against the dank confident they're going to creeping shell us Too bad. And I think we just want to go Blood Moon here, turn off their mana sources, and then we will drop a tracker and pass. Is so good. We need a three, apparently. Okay, that's good. They didn't hit anything to bring back their amalgam. We're definitely not blocking the blood gas. All right, they can flag, wiped our board. Not good for us. Ooze is good for us. It's a little late. There's a good chance we're dead. Bow does not target any graveyard. Put up to four target cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order. another chill not good for us blood gas trigger bring back all their amalgams and we are dead surgical in this matchup and then we want relic we want the other ooze I imagine we want these anger of the gods as well yeah our opponent's really good at casting faithless looting all right so I know we're on the rhythm game plan here but I feel like rhythm's not that relevant in this matchup and is Bo that relevant in this matchup? All right, what are your recommendations on what we cut here, Alex, or everybody in chat? What do we got going on? Because to me, the rhythm and the bow's on the chopping block. Um, possibly even the Dom race here. Faithless looting is a very strong. Okay, 
Then let's make those cuts and bring these in. Yeah, Faithless Lid is just super strong. I think I just have that Tron luck and it kind of just comes with me with every deck I play because you really got to have that top deck god mode when it comes to uh, Tron so that just that's, it just comes with me so every deck I play I'm like oh this is exactly what I need here we go all right so this isn't bad we're gonna go Arbor Elf into Blood Moon so I think that's pretty good um, and I think Blood Moon's here is really good because we are able to uh, drudge decks really have a greedy mana base um, because they have to. So then we can take advantage of that. Mm, are we good to pass? Yeah, we're good to pass. As always, if you guys have any recommendations on how I can improve the stream, the videos, anything that's going on, um, just let me know. I'm more than happy to take any recommendations and try to improve from there. So, I think we'll run out the stomping ground. Play blue and then pass it back. We can definitely play blue white coming up. It's not a problem. You work on a good list that you like for the current meta and ship it my way and let me know when it's going to be a good time um, during the streams and we'll definitely make that happen. Oops. I definitely double clicked more than I was supposed to. Okay. So we're going to land, untap here, play that, drop a tracker, and drop a wooden, add a counter, I mean add a clue. And we'll pass it back to our opponent. I don't think I want to block that at all. for us. And his blood gas has haste. Can we even stay alive? I don't think so. Block two, and then take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven, twelve. I think we're dead. Unfortunate. Dang confident crushes us. That was uh, that's pretty rough. Reminds me why I uh, think Dredge is a really good deck. So 
So will Dredge go on the uptick now, now that people aren't packing as much graveyard hate since KCI is out? Why do you think Dredge is a bad deck? Yeah, I, I definitely agree there, Greg. It's really annoying to play against with any deck that you're playing fair. But, I mean, that's the nature of modern, right? Like, it's not really a fair format. Oh, it's a bad deck because it beats Ponza? Yeah, you're not wrong there. That was, that was pretty rough. I don't think we... I don't know, we couldn't really have done much else. We were in a decent spot. We would have just drawn some more lands in game one, so... Drew too many blood wounds as well. Okay, this is sweet. Are we going against blue white again? It's bad because only bad guys play it. Yeah, they. Is this Manafar? No, it's spirits. So how are we against the Spirits matchup, Alex? What are your personal thoughts on that? Forty sixty. Those aren't great numbers. Alrighty, so I think we want to Blood Moon here to try to get them off at least blue mana. Do you think the Rhythm and the Domri is going to push this over and make it more favorable for us, or uh, just a, a more even matchup rather than being in the the downside there. Okay, so we're gonna play Forest, Utopia Sprawl, the other one. Generate some extra green. Good that. Untap. That again. This we're gonna play some Blood Braid Elf. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, having more threats is pretty awesome. And then we're not relying on landy package, which is very reasonable. And we're coming in hot with a blood braid off that's plus one plus one countered. And a bird. And I think we want this to have this plus one plus one counter so we can start blocking that uh, Supreme Phantom. One, two bird value. Okay, definitely blocking that. Oh boy. We got ourselves a hunt master. as well. Let's start swinging. Boom. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Alright, so I want the angers for sure. Um, I'm not sure if we would want anything else though.
okay, boil. Now, is choke good enough? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So, is our game plan here just to drop the blood moons in place of the boil and the choke? Because the other cards I'm thinking about is Aronis as well. And then uh, the oozes aren't as great either. Yeah, that's why I wasn't sure about Choke and Boil because it's like a strong card against them, but they play the they have the ability to just get around it anyway. So we're bringing these six in, and we gotta cut six cards. How about we cut the uh, three moons and these three? And call it like that. Okay. Let's run it. Seems good. We got some bunch of accelerators, and, and we got some ability to hold them off with bolts into a Domri into an Inferno. So this seems solid. They got a vile turn one. Yeah, Night of Autumn is a really good card. So we can play the land, bolt the supreme, and then play the bird, and pass. Oh, a braid. That's definitely a card we should have brought in. No, we don't have a braids though. That's in the that's the other list I think you had. I think we just drop Storm Breath and start smashing, or do we go Domri into Inferno? But we're gonna be able to go Inferno regardless of the next turn. So I'm gonna go to Storm Breath here. And I don't really think they have a good way to deal with Storm Breath either, which is just awesome for us.
dropping it seems solid, but we're okay with that because we're going to be dropping an Infernal Titan to kill both Thalia and Stormbreath. Oof, they are reflector maging our bird. That's bad for us. Okay, so we can Domri here. Hmm. Domri plus offer up our Storm Earth as a trade. We'd have to take two life for that though. Or play tracker and bird. We'll tap land pat. No, it can't play bird, so. Hmm. Yeah, I like tracker into a land here, and we'll pay the two life. And then pass it back to our opponent. Because here we can crack the clue, draw an extra card, block the Reflector Mage effectively, and then trade with the Storm Breath. you got for us opponent Ooh, another reflector mage hmm, okay Do we block here? I think we want to know if it's if that inferno is coming down. Okay, so we're living off of a draw for the inferno to come down. So as a result, I think we should block. So we can go Domri into double dork, or no, Domri into a single dork, or play out triple dorks. Triple dork does not sound bad, because we can get some blockers, and we will be able to make sure we get an Inferno Titan next turn. They're gonna hit our bird, which is not good for us. They're gonna swing out, we can't block. And we're gonna go down to four here. And then Hope that Inferno Titan's good enough to bring us back into this game. All right, 
right, so Inferno's good. So I think we should use Inferno here to take out the deputy so we can get two more blockers in case anything happens. Okay. I think we pass it and see what our opponent's got for us. Opponent's got path. Not great. Alright. So we got a double chump block now. Hope that our opponent doesn't have another deputy or another reflector. Or a phantasmal image. Noble's good. That would be the dream. Another Inferno. Inferno is just better, right? Drop Inferno, kill Thalia and the Noble. No, no, that's not good enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Okay, so I think we have to just tap out for Inferno, shoot the Noble and the Thalia at them for one, and then have a blocker for the Reflector. Reflector keeping up. Um keeping up two blockers here for two the two reflector mages what do you guys think because alternatively we can go blood braid elf into tireless tracker um but if we don't hit another relevant item i think we're dead Debatably, we should be hitting the Reflector Mage in case they have another Thalia in hand that they could vial in. Alright, yeah, so I agree. I think, the, I think the Inferno line's safer, and it's the better line. Now, what do I hit? Do I hit the Reflector? Because I'm thinking that's where I'm at right now. Because if I hit the Reflector, like I said, I'm, um, they won't be able to vial in another Thalia. Where if I hit Thalia and Noble, if they have another folly in hand, they'll be able to drop that. Okay, let's do it. We could have hit a lot of dead cards with uh, Blood Braid, so it really wasn't worth it. Because we could have hit, I think, a, uh, we still have one Blood Moon left in the deck. Oh yeah, Ants Brawl. Sweet. Okay. 
We can Blood Braid, see what we hit, and then attack with Inferno. A little bit of a safer line. I will definitely take a tracker. Opponents not playing humans. Opponents, I think, on spirits. Okay. All right, if we swing, shoot them down to th uh, three, they go to 11. No, we'd have to shoot one at normal, put them down to 12. Pumping twice, make it eight, nine, 10, 11, one short. No. So I think we just swing with the Inferno here. And then we kill these off. Oh, we need this to be a bad company. <laughs> Not another spirit. Not another spirit. Oh, that's another spirit. I think that's game. I think that's game. Oh. So the only way we play Misty, get a clue, crack it, get a mountain, I mean get the uh, draw exactly bolt, shoot, we would still lose because the spirit the Supreme Phantom would put us to one. Uh, I, don't, I think that's it. I can't, we can't think of any other way for us to stay alive. And uh, this doesn't even keep us alive. This is just us doing it to do it. Yeah, we're dead. That's fair. Alright, so I don't think we're making any changes to the deck. Do we want to bring in Destructive Revelry for a while? I think it's kind of a narrow card to be doing just that. Like, I, I would take in a Braid, because I can hit artifacts and a creature, but hitting just a artifact here is, just doesn't seem worth it to me. Yeah, let's run it like it is. We were so close. Boy, oh boy. All right. Let's see if we can be better than the last deck. Yeah, I mean, they, they honestly could have beat us with any flyer, too. Like, if they vialed in a, a two or higher power flyer, they would have won the game. So they had, they had a lot of outs. All right, so we have no accelerator, but we have anger. Is this good enough to keep? Like, this is a slow hand.
All right, let's do it. Yeah, after we resolve anger, we've got a. Uh... This he loses to uh, a few things, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna listen to uh, the master. That is a, um, it's a wanderer there. So Greg, you know, he's got it. I was always told greed is good, is it not? Look, we have a bolt now. It's fine. This is fine. Alright, they've got a Supreme Phantom. Do we bolt the Wanderer? And then next turn we can see if he drops anything else and then we can anger. Alright, Bolting Wanderer it is. Yeah, if they have another lord, it puts us in a pretty bad spot. But the question is, is the anger right now worth it in, in, because of that threat? Or do we just drop a tracker? Dropping tracker feels bad because if we drop tracker, then anger, we're losing our own creature for no reason. I mean, realistically, aren't we going to cast anger next turn, though? I feel like holding tracker for next turn is more relevant in case we do draw the land. We'd be able to, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, th I think the land into ang um, anger here is good because it's going to guarantee us to get rid of this lord. And then next turn, at the very least, we can play a tracker and we'd be able to keep it. It definitely does feel bad. But if we can get a land here, we'd be able to go Domri into Stormbreath, which would be pretty cool. So, no land. Uh, so I think we just play out our tracker and pass. Ooh, they got a reflector mage. Okay. Good. So I think here we're just going to bring out Domri. We're going to tick up, get the bolt, and shoot down the Reflector Mage. Yeah, it does seem weird against me. It's really just good against uh, Bloodbraid Elf, but I don't know. I think this is one of the issues of where you're overboarding. Oh, I guess it was relevant right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. We were just talking about it, too. Okay. On the plus side here, Domri is still alive. And he can live through this turn with a swing. And then next turn we can go Storm Breath into good stuff, or Tracker and hold up. Yeah, I'd be I'd be very impressed if they did kill Domri this turn. 
I mean, being at six is no joke. I think we're I think we're okay with that. Um, so here, do we tick up, drop a tracker, and then hold up bolt, and then next turn try to go for the storm breath? I like the idea of holding up the bolt here in case they have anything against us, rather than being completely tapped out. I don't want them to do like a phantasmal image against our storm breath because that'd be really bad. Yeah, because if we can draw a land um, with the Dahmer here um, to cast the Storm Breath, then we can hold up Bolt if they do have a um, Phantasmal Image, which I think is, puts us in a much better spot. Looks like they're swinging at Domri again. Domri could take the hit, and then... Uh, we would be able to plus up again without having to trade off our tireless tracker, which I think is better. Sprawl. Not where I want it to be, because I definitely want it to be able to hold up um, my mana for... Okay, and the land would have been really good because we could have gotten tracker bigger. I think we're plussing up. And... I think we dropped the bird. Yeah, yep, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, play the bird, make the one, two, and then hold the bolt again. Hmm. All right, they've got a cocoa. I guess this Eidolon's been pretty relevant. We haven't been able to just drop everything. I don't imagine they're copying Reflector, bouncing our tracker. Mm -hmm. 
Now the cool thing we can do here is we can use Kesseg to target their Reflector Mage to kill it, which is nice. Oh, they're pouncing our, our Mana Dork. Okay, I'm okay with that. So let's see how they swing here, because we can definitely mess with their game plan quite a bit. Thanks for joining us, Tuke. Okay, so they've got a Drog Skull, so I definitely want to use my Bolt on the Drog Skull. Which would be hard because they have a Wanderer and it's going to be going to a 3-3. So I could bolt the I could bolt the Wanderer in response so our um, bolt the Wanderer now so it gets rid of the Wanderer and then when they swing with both we cast Sig the Reflector Mage to kill it and then we block the other Reflector. Um, so I think that's our line. And I'm hoping they swing with both reflectors here, and they don't see the fact that Kessig can kill the reflector. Our Domri's still going to die because of the Eidolon, but we're going to be getting two more creatures off the board, which is going to be awesome for us. Oh, they're swinging with just that. Okay. So we could choose to... Tr we can't trade here. Hmm. So I think Domri's just dead huh okay yeah I think Domri's dead I don't think we can do much about that which is fine because I definitely don't want to just block it would be pretty bad for us to lose a creature for no reason Yeah, they're humans. They'll have to worry about um, Drag Skull giving them protection. Hmm. Still not hitting a land. That's screwing us over a good bit here. So I am thinking our best bet to soak up some damage and to try to stay relevant in this game is just dropping Domri again and then just ticking up for no reason other than just a tick up to keep making him uh, unkillable on the next turn. they can send an Eidolon and Drog Skull here and um, we can bounce with the Eidolon. If they swing in all three we'll take out the Reflector and so Domri should no matter what at the worst case go down to two if they're willing to trade a creature for that. If they don't want to trade any creatures they can send in just Drog Skull and make it go down to three. If I were them, I'd probably do just the single Drog Skull swing. Yeah, that seems like the correct line. And we still can't hit a Mana Source. Oh my gosh. Oh, they swung at us. Okay. 
So we're going to plus here. Let's drop a dragon. Give it a counter. And I think we're just going to pass turn. So the only thing I'm really afraid of right now is a, is a phantasmal image copying that drug skull or copying our dragon. So this is not good. They're copying drag skull. Yeah, yep. That would have been, uh, seeing that now, I think that would have been correct that we should have just dropped it earlier. Um, on the plus side here, we should be able to hold them off a good bit just blocking things down. So we're getting attacked by the 5-5. Five, five. I think we have to take it because we're not willing to give up our storm breath yet. All right, land is good. Are there any creatures that we really should be trying to get right now? Or should... Uh, I don't know if the Domri's ult's really relevant right now. I feel like getting more creatures that could potentially help us deal with the board is going to be our best bet. Looks like we just get Bloodbraid Elf. Which is just a 3-2. I don't think they have enough quite yet in the air to kill us. And I'm going to crack this right now just in case we get a land. every blocker we can on the ground, so. And another lore will put us to one. Yeah, you know, we definitely called out this Eidolon for not doing much in the beginning, and it's it's definitely controlled this entire game. So we have to block here. Huh. don't think we have enough here to do much. We can tick up the Domri just because we can. And we can take care of that reflector mage.
And then we can just swing into our deaths. I think we're back. Um, we just swung and then assigned some damage. Nah, definitely not you. I get these random disconnects. Yeah, I, think, I definitely think that if um, we navigated this game wrong, if we would have just dropped the Storm Breath right away uh, because it would have been a 5-5 five five instead of being a 4-4, four four, I think we would have just been fine. Um, and we would have been able to stabilize much sooner and then try to be on the aggression after that. Um, but instead, I went with this. Uh, I went with a line thinking I needed to play safer, and I think it cost us the game. All right, so we have a classic modern deck. It went 3-2. So thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. Um, that's going to be it for the stream tonight. I'll run it again on uh, Sunday around 6 or 7 o'clock. I'll make sure to post it before I do. Um, these two videos will probably be up within the next day or two. Open the chest. We've, we've gone over this. I lose so much money when we open chests. <laughs> But then again, I guess chests are kind of worthless right now. I'll open a single chest. A single chest. All right. That's technically a profit. We got 25 play points and a Sun Petal Grove. <laughs> I got to keep the chest, man. No, I, I can't run another one tonight. I, uh... I need to get on some uh, some Kingdom Hearts action. I've been uh, pretty excited for that game. I've been waiting for like a decade for it to come out, so I only got to play it in like two hours last night, so I'm going to jump on that. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for hanging out. Uh, follow me. Let me know if there's any recommendations on how to improve. Um, really appreciate you guys being here. So Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you guys on Sunday. I'll try to be on at about 6 o'clock. I don't have an Elgato, so I can't. Oh, 14 years? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't have an Elgato, so I can't stream the PS4. So um, if I can uh, get my hands on one, maybe I'll snag one this next uh, paycheck period, and then we can get that going. So that way I can stream all the games I play on the PS4, like Kingdom Hearts, right now. And then I wouldn't mind um, actually doing a full playthrough of Kingdom Hearts. I, I own 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, and 3 now. So maybe I can do a full walkthrough and just play through the entire series. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Um, I need to dedicate some time to that. But for now, I think we're going to call it a night. Yeah, if you want to add me on PS4, just let me know. Message me, and then I will get you my gamertag. I think it's the exact same gamertag I have on here. So just add me, Unstable Voodoo.